Hello fans, viewers and subscribers are joining me, Ruku, for another beer review. Um, this one has another shout out, I've been working my way through them people, so I'm nearly at the end now. Um, so I'm just going to put a few shout outs on hold for a little while, um, but I will let you know when to, uh, when to give me some more, because as I say, I've got a load of stuff that I still need to upload, so uh, yeah, these things take time. Anyway, this was recommended by James, who also recommended the Foster's Beer Review, so he wanted to know the difference, i.e. what's better and what's not on a night out, um, preferably from the tap or draft as you were, which one tastes better, which one maybe you'd choose out of Foster's or Cronenberg. In the last video I did, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it, it's the Foster's Review on my channel, I did mention that I know what one I would choose, um, but I, I've got to remain, you know, non-biased as it were, because that's what I'm here to do, I'm here to review all beer equally and nothing more. So, Cronenberg 1664, or should it be Cronenberg, if you're French. Um, Cronenberg 1664 uh, comes in at 5%. I don't know if you can get that, because the can is incredibly shiny. 5% there, and I don't know if you get the meal there. Do you get the meal? No. Right, well, because they're weird, they've just decided to do it at 50 CL, which is basically 500 mil. I don't know why they've done that? It really annoys me sometimes. But anyway, look, 50 CL, which is which is 500 mil, um, and it's uh, France number one imported beer, evidently. So they must drink this a lot out there. Couldn't be up. Right, that is the beer in the old style Cronenberg glass, because I don't believe in the new glass. Don't like the new glass. Can't get on with it. Um, yeah, very striking. The, the colour is a honey gold, basically, and uh, if we can come in, you can just see small but flourishing carbonation. The head is small. I don't know if we can even get any of that. For uh, small but sort of, I don't know. That looks borderline watery, but yet kind of yeasty looking it looks like it's just sat there just like uh, I mean look, if you see what I mean it's got a gentle wobble on it so that the head doesn't break up so it looks quite thick so that might be a good thing I don't know um, Cronenberg drunk it many times in the past don't know why I haven't reviewed it sooner so thank you James for, uh, for pointing that out to me so Cronenberg let's do this shall we start off with the smell and then as always on to the taste Let's see what this will dig out for me. Hmm. Do you know what? There's a gentle hops there. And like a wheat smell as well, like a wheat um like a wheat like a wheat field smell. So if you can imagine if don't know why you would, but if you if you ever did, if you ran down a a field full of wheat, uh, just randomly, then yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting, that sort of smell. It smells quite fresh and doughy, so like a bready doughy smell. And you know what? That almost smells a little bit herby as well. I'm not sure where that's coming in, but a little bit of herb there. So very good on the smells. So, taste-wise, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Cronenberg versus Foster's. Please vote now. Interesting. Okay. First thing that I can taste is a form of syrup or possible glucose. It's um, I've got a very good taste bud for this because, as I say, I I'm, I love sweet stuff. So as you know, any sweet beer I can detect pretty well. This definitely has some form of uh, glucose or even syrup in it. Not necessarily a bad thing, it gives it a bit of sweetness. The head is weird. The head the head is it it, it comes across as thick but then it it's almost foamy. 
There you go. My burp is a sign of good beer. <coughs> the head is sort of thick but foamy. It's an odd one. The head almost is, has small bubbles, compact, with like a hoppy taste on it. Slight bitterness to the head as well. The beer in question is hoppy. Almost got like um, a, a, a nice mellow hot bite on it. And that stays with you from start to finish, even on the aftertaste. And you can taste the sweetness too, so it's mostly dominated by that, but... And I want to say, again, I'm going to stick my neck out on the line for this one. I'm going to say there's like a slight essence of wheat there as well. Um, when you have, I don't know if any any of you out there, especially you James, have ever tried any wheat beers, um, you'll understand what they taste like. And this is kind of what I'm getting, that sort of essence of slight wheat. Very, very faint, but it also brings a texture with it almost. So you've got this... Start off with a head, you've got this um, sort of small, compact, foamy head that has got good bubbles, good carbonation, tight bubbles, and the mouthfeel is it's just as it is, basically. It's small and it pops. You then get the bitterness from the head, then you work your way down, then you get this sweetness of the beer with this sort of mellow hop taste that kind of lingers all the way through. Very nice, by the way. Um, and then you also get this almost somewhere in there, I don't know whereabouts, but somewhere in there I'm getting this wheat taste almost. And also to me it feels familiar in the mouth as a wheat. So almost like as if it's half wheat beer. So I'm not too sure on whether I should be saying that, but that's what I'm actually picking up. The taste itself is is quite strong. Um, I'm not talking about alcohol, I'm talking about flavours. Very strong flavours again of that sweet hoppy mellow taste. And uh, the head as well working the bitterness in there too. Bitterness doesn't last long at all, it's just a, a fraction of a second. But if we come in, you can see there's virtually hardly any, well I say hardly any, but typically now there is. The lacing is yeah, it's okay, it's not great. <coughs> anyway, moving, <laughs> moving swiftly on. So the lacing's not great, but that doesn't really matter. The head retains a little bit, so it kind of goes down. And I know this is a little bit of frosting here on the design, but you'd have to believe me when I say that. If I tilt it down, you can see that it's only half a finger thick, basically. So not very um, thick head, but yeah, nice, either way. So my verdicts then, um, very easy, and there's two ways I'm going to approach this. So first of all, let's talk about Foster's. Foster's, I believe, is a nice beer, um, not my cup of tea, a lot of English people drink it, and uh, I can't, I, I'm not a big fan of Foster's, but I will drink it if there is nothing else available. So that is my last resort, not because I hate the beer, it's not a bad beer, but just personal preference taste, I like a beer with flavour. Um, so something more like this. Um, however, when you're out and about and you're, on, you're in a pub and it's on draft, I would probably opt for this, because this has more flavour on draft than it does the can. But weirdly enough, Foster's tastes slightly better on draft than it does in can or bottle. So really, James, it goes down on personal preferences. If you want a stronger beer with flavour, this is your beer. If you want a weaker beer that's more mellow, gives you minimal taste but nice refreshment, Foster's definitely. And according to price, well, it's a no-brainer because Foster's is generally going to be cheaper than Cronenberg. So if you want to save the pounds and pennies, probably go for Foster's. If you want to go and splash your cash, Cronenberg. So there you go. That's my verdict, ladies and gentlemen. So join me next time um, when I'll be doing some more beer reviews and uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more live updates as well. So keep an eye out, ladies and gentlemen, and I want your comments on what I should do next for the live videos.
So join me then, hopefully, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.